Okay, it's Sunday, which means against my better judgment, it's time to go on Reddit and see what questions we can dredge up from this wretched hive of scum and villainy. First off, should ultimate abilities be charged when damaging non-healable HP? And the gist is, should you get alt charge from damaging things like Bridget's Armor and Rally Pack and Doomfist's Passive Shield, blah blah. I don't actually know the intricacies of the alt charge system enough to know if you do get alt charge off of all of these things, so we'll abstain from answering that. Uh, don't currently know enough about Hammond. Stop y'all saying Wrecking Ball. That's definitely not his name. How dare you? It'd be like calling Diva Mecha. Uh, let's see. I don't think I'm a normal player. Uh, I'm a McCree main. I have pretty decent aim. I was pretty good. However, I disabled UI randomly one game. Uh, and then just left it off. So if you, I disabled you, and yeah, okay. That's really weird. Don't turn your UI off. Um, it's probably like pure placebo effect where it worked once, so then it worked after that point. For those that solo queued to 3,300 plus, how did you do it? Uh, I've managed to do that, yes. Uh, is there a certain way you communicate with your random teammates to make them listen? Ho 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 ho! Oh. I'm calling out flanks uh, are doing it in a slightly better way. Can you provide some tips on how to get a group of randoms working together? So um, I've solo queued to Masters, and uh, I've never joined the voice chat once. So the answer is pick Reinhardt and hope they go with you. That's how you do it. Where does May stand in Diamond Plus? I'm a plat player, da 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 I will typically play May. I've had no problems playing off meta this far and May's fall off damage, but I find myself having a better time dealing with Farah. In Diamond and above. Is Diamond and above too meta to have May? Nah. <laughs> that's, that's so cute. He thinks it gets better once you get above Diamond. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah. <laughs> nah, everybody still works in Diamond. There's fucking. Torbjorn and Bastion mains are up there. Like, don't, no. It's, it don't matter that much. PC problems. Uh, recently bought the game on PC. This is not really going to be an answer, a question I'm great for answering, but this weekend I could test it without buying the game. I instantly downloaded it. Playing the free version was about as expected. About until I found another player where it might drop down to 3040, which was okay, a bit annoying, but playable. Current price, blah, 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 blah. Can I get over 25 FPS in the practice range and it goes down? Jesus Christ. Do I wait until... I mean, that's really weird that the free version, like, when he tried it out, ran better? Weird. No? Uh, get a better computer or turn the graphics way down. Any tips to maintain Plat Plus SR? I mean, was mainly a Ryan Orisa player, but realized... That tanks don't get a lot of luck climbing in solo queue. I like an 80% win ratio on Reinhardt. Granted, I've played the boy for 10 seasons. So, well, yeah, 10 seasons, because I haven't really played as much of him lately. Thought I'd give Bridget a go. Really enjoying it. Uh, I want to properly learn how to play her efficiently. What are some pro tips to be, and be a good teammate in solo queue? Well, I mean, if we're, we're talking about, like, Bridget specifically, or just playing the game... I mean, assuming we're talking about Bridget, seeing as Bridget's mentioned, um, stun everybody. Keep stunning people. Um, it, figure out if you gotta sit with your back line and protect them from divers and flankers. If not, go up and support whoever your tank is and just bully around the other tank instead. Um, use whip shot less. Generally, people use it too much. It's an ability that can end up saving people rather than actually killing them. So don't just use it on any old asshole. Very common one is they'll use it to, like, get the last hit on D.Va's mech, but then shunt D.Va's mech, like, ten feet away, and then D.Va pops out miles away from the team. Don't do that. But, like, really, Bridget's kind of easy. Don't just use the armor pack for no reason. Um, very common Bridget players to just throw the armor pack on any old asshole as they're, like, running back or something like that. 
don't do that. Six seconds might not sound like a long time, but when someone urgently needs healing and your only actual method of healing pe reliably healing people is on cooldown, you're going to be pretty upset about it. So don't just use the armor pack for no reason either. And that's all I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, Moira remain hoping for some advice. It's a video. Diamond Tank main asking Hammond questions. The thing is, Hammond is not yet currently in the game, so some of these are going to be hard to answer. What tank should he be played with? Why and how? So probably um, other dive tanks. He probably works well with Diva, particularly, just because Defense Matrix is. Um, more reliable method of well it's better for blocking big projectiles and hammond has plenty of ability like soak up damage already with his massive shield so having the defense matrix to block really big projectiles is probably more important to him um also that you could have some fun using uh, self-destruct to hurt people in a direction and then putting the mines where they're gonna go you could have some fun with that one um, it, it seems like he would work best with other dive tanks. Also, Zarya would make it easier for him to just get in. Um, a Graviton, put the mines in the Graviton, you know, that fun stuff. But then, like, he's probably also still fine with tanks like Reinhardt and Orisa as well, because... He he does it's not like he has no ranged ability at all, and then while the rest of the team is like marching in, he can fling himself bodily in there to disrupt them, and then the rest of the team walks in. So I can't imagine him working badly with any tank, really. Ex and but I think he would probably be better with dive tanks just because he himself is a pretty aggressive boy. Ironically enough, for a um for a small fat hamster. Um uh, yeah, he's aggressive, so probably other ones, uh, other aggressive ones, or Zarya, and how, you know, same way you run a dive comp, just fucking go in there and get hitting, boys. How should I go about playing conservatively? For example, if I am playing with an Orisa, should I split off and do my own thing or try to hang back? What can I be doing while hanging back to be still be getting value? So, it's not like he's got no range at all, yeah, like... Yeah, he's got fall-off damage and all that, but, like, each individual bullet doesn't really do that much damage, so the fall-off isn't as extreme as it could be. So, just, like, harassing people with the guns, like, he's better at range than D.Va is, you know? And people don't really complain about D.Va not being great at long range. Um, he can probably can split off and do his own thing, but that's probably really map-dependent more than anything else, because I'm trying to imagine, like, a uh, Hammond splitting off on, like, Numbani to do his own thing. Um, like, I'm imagining, like, defending the third checkpoint on Numbani. You wouldn't really be able to go off and do your own thing as Hammond, because there's just, like... The architecture of that map doesn't seem very well suited to Hammond, but, I mean, again, he's not in the game yet, so who knows. I know he is technically in the game, but he's not actually in the game yet, okay? The PTR and Quick Play are not, they're wa wastes of space. Um, so he probably can split off and do his own thing, but I imagine that being pretty map dependent. Just sitting back and like shooting at people from behind the shield while you're waiting for an opportunity is like probably also fine. It's not like he has no range at all. It's clearly, a, he's a, you know, he's a close range boy, but... It's not like he's got nothing for long range. You just chip people. How can I peel effectively? That's a hard one to answer. How should he be played if the team has low healing? Probably very conservatively. Um, it might not be that much of an issue for him, because he's got like such a big beefy shield. Like It might not end up being a massive deal, but probably pretty conservatively. How should my playstyle change based on enemy team compositions, death ball versus dive? Uh, Anna is especially threatening. So, death ball, it's probably based largely just around, like, slowly building up your ultimate and then jumping in on them and, like, you know, coordinating with your teammates and all that. Dive, it's going to be more about, like, disrupting people. Like, you probably can chew through a tank pretty quickly. So if you just, like... Decide, see that Winston dive in and then jump on him, he's gonna have a hard time. Uh, if your squishy members are getting dove, you can, uh, you know, you can be threatening and drive them away. Your big boy can body block for them, blah, 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 but I don't, you know, can't really answer that one until I've played a bit of him. 
What even are some viable playstyles? Most of the time I feel like I'm just throwing cooldowns at the enemy. I mean, he's got, like, a lot of buttons to push, so that certainly seems like a valid comment. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, he's pretty aggressive. It seems like the only one besides just aggressive would be, like, flanking, which would be map-dependent, which is also still aggressive when you think about it, and, like, play more patiently and wait till you build your ultimate to go in and just, like, massively disrupt people. Though it seems like he's basically like, I'm gonna go fight some boys. If I'm not engaging right away, what should I be doing before going in? What is my cue? Well, he seems very good at, like, diving on one person and fucking them up, but uh, yeah, I, uh, let's stop talking about that one, because it's start. it's like, they're getting more and more specific, and I just don't, I don't know. CC on Ryan and cancelling alt sadness, yes. Just to clarify, I'm a support main, blah, 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 blah. Where I was absolutely shut down by opposing Anna and May. So the, su such is life sometimes, yes. Basically, when the opposing team had an Anna, she would land sleep on me right when I was in the middle of Hammer Dan, and it would cancel my ult completely. This occurred three times, and I am now convinced that she is either very skilled, my team is not killing her in time, or I am not using my shield enough. See, there is a hidden third option, which is this, that she's lucky. Um, which is the most likely answer, actually. Because... The dart, unless she's, like, touching you, in which case you got bigger issues that Anna was walking up to you and touching you without dying. Unless she was, like, touching you. You can't really trank a Reinhardt on reaction. So it would have to be, like, she predicted it in advance and threw it at you. Or, more likely, uh, what, what rank we at? Mid, like, gold or plat. Either way, I, don't, I doubt the Anna is good enough to anticipate Earth Shatter ahead of time. So, the more likely answer is just that she was lucky in that individual game. Um, or you're particularly unlucky, because I've definitely played games as Reinhardt, where I've gotten CC'd out of Earth Shatter, like, 12 times, and every time it seemed like it was perfectly good to go for it, but, like, McCree just happens to come around the corner and go, oh, fuck you, at the exact moment I push the button. Uh, you can just be unlucky. I'm having, having trouble playing Ryan just in general when the other team has May. I'm not having difficulties with the ice wall, but with either with her slow. With or without my shield up when my team and I are pushing, she would freeze me and her Ryan would charge and insta-kill me. Again, please advise. So, I find what tends to happen is... If you can, like, press up against a wall, here's what, like, here's what you do with May, right? This works a surprising amount of the time because Mays have bad reaction time. If you press up against a wall with your shield out, then the May will start walking in towards you, right? And then as she's walking in behind the wall to try and freeze you, you charge her. And she's, like, touching you, so the if box, hitbox can get iffy. This is particularly easy if she has put her wall behind you, because that thing's got all kinds of collision over it. So more often than not, you don't actually even move anywhere, but you still pin her. Um, she, like, you just put, push in against the wall, back to it, she'll come in to start pin, and then you pin her. And then you might still get pinned by the Reinhardt, but the May is dead by that point, so it makes it easier. Uh, otherwise, it's just kind of like, you're probably too far up if you're reliably getting, like, frozen and bullied by May, basically. Uh, consider playing more conservatively. Should I quit while I'm ahead, or should I just keep driving? Hello, I ended season 10 at 1,000. I have now climbed to 1,907. Oh, good job. Good job. It's a pretty big climb in one season. Should I keep grinding and try to get to plat, or should I sit in around... This is my first time out of... I mean, just keep playing if you want to climb. Like, what what good is not playing going to do suddenly? You know? Just, just keep playing if you want to climb. That's the only, the only way you're going to climb is by playing the game. So it doesn't make sense to not play if you do, if you want to climb. I haven't played since Arisa. Interested in coming back. I haven't played the game in ages. I'm looking at some info. Very vague. Blah, blah, blah. Console Moira remain here. How do I make myself more useful during mid-fight? I usually find I am between healing and DPS. So around the mid-fight, by that point, I'm generally low on healing, but my team is too spread out for me to effectively heal or burst heal. So the easiest answer is try to have your ultimate. Because 
It builds really quickly, and if you're mid-fight, like, you've probably built up a lot of alt charge by that quest, by that point. So, if, uh... When you're lo running low on resource, that's like the point where you want to throw the healing orb at people, and then while you're using the healing orb, you can refresh your resource, because while that's healing your team, you can drain them. Um, try to be as efficient with the resource as possible, probably holding down left click on people too much, because the goal is really to let the regen do as much work as possible, and only hold down the left click on, or, well, console, hold down the healing beam when people, like, really need, like, they're actively being murdered right now. Um, yeah, like, the easiest way to, like, try and maintain charge mid-fight is just to throw the healing orb and then recharge a resource while that's healing people. Um, and, like, by the time the fight's, like, midway through, you should have built up your ult by that point, which makes it very easy, because it's just throw orb if you have it and then push Q. Um... Yeah, but if it's like mid-fight, you're running low, try to use the healing orb while you recharge your resource, and that makes it easier, which is usually better done, like, closer towards the start of the fight, because people tend to start getting spread out as the fight goes on, so the orb is going to get more value the more people are together, so as soon as you get down to, like, let's say we, you've used, like, 33%, 40%, 50%, something like that. Just throw the orb by that point and start recharging because also you don't want to run out of resource and then be like, fuck, now I need to refresh. So once you get down like halfway, just like try to use the healing orb and then refresh the resource at that point. This is like mid fight. If you're still doing like the poking or prodding phase at that point, it's less of an issue. You've got more time to refresh, but mid fight specifically. Um, try to use the healing orb and then refresh your resource. Free VOD reviews, yeah, mm-hmm. What is the problem with the comp queue? I was playing ranked and I was thinking of going into another match, so I had it on queue and I stopped because I wanted to take a break. However, for some reason I got a 10-min ban from comp because I left a game. It didn't even put me in a game. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had, I've, uh... Sometimes it's kind of weird with, like, when it puts you in the game. Uh, because, like, I've had people leave the group I'm in before it puts us in the game, but then it puts us in the game, dude's still there, just not in the group, even though he left the group before we got put in the game. So, you know, sometimes it's weird. Uh, what do you do when you don't know how to affect, how to play any hero effectively? When bouncing, blah, 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 and I think my problem is the fact I'm not sure how to play any heroes effectively. My most played hero is Lucio at the moment. I have a very questionable playstyle in which I don't heal. I mean, the goal is to do as little healing as possible as Lucio. I basically become a third DPS and occasionally heal swishies. I also rarely speed boost my team. Now you're being bad. And while I play quick play a lot and nobody says anything about this playstyle because it's quick play, I know it's just not right. I mean, you are meant to heal as little as possible as Lucio because the speed boost is the stronger aspect, but you are meant to speed boost your team, yes. Uh, my second most played hero is Moira, but I no longer enjoy her at all. Disgusting. Third one is Zenyatta, and while I enjoy him, my aim isn't very good, and I find myself out of position extremely quickly, and the fun goes away very quickly when people take advantage of my massive hitbox, and I get one clip by Tracers, killed by the blah 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 meh 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 meh. Uh, fourth one is Mercy, but... Uh, but again, playing Mercy physically hurts, in my opinion. It's the most boring thing on Earth. Agree. Uh, most played here is I, uh, I've tried multiple times to change my playstyle for Lucio, but it just bores me. The way I play Lucio is the only way I enjoy him, and I'm not going to sacrifice my fun just for the competitive mode at the same time. I don't want to ruin other people's competitive experience because I'm feeding or not healing. I would rather pick up a completely different hero entirely, but Lucio is the only one I truly have fun with. What do you do in this situation? Am I supposed to start all over again? So it sounds like the competitive mode just might not be for you. Um, because if you're more interested in having fun, playing competitive ain't the place to go for a variety of reasons, really. This is the thing with going into the competitive mode, is that you're supposed to say to yourself, or I'm prepared to sacrifice having as much fun now to actually try and win the game. So I'm not gonna just pick Torbjorn because he's fun, right? Like, or I'm not gonna pick Moira and just only right-click on people because I am meant to be healing, you know, like... You are meant to give up a degree of fun when playing competitive, so it might just not be for you if you're more interested in having fun. 
also uh the overwatch community is terrible so there's that um like if if playing the like if playing your hero the correct way is boring to you then i don't know what to tell you probably just shouldn't play competitive at that point because it sounds like you're more interested in other things not everybody wants to play the game competitively that's fine but you do have to be willing to give up an amount of fun when playing competitive at the end of the day you're meant to have fun yes but you uh you can't always do what you want in competitive this is how i ended up playing reinhardt for 10 seasons did i want to play reinhardt no no i did not when i bought the game i wanted to play tracer uh, that, but Reinhardt at the time was pretty much mandatory and no one liked picking Reinhardt because he's not a particularly fun hero to play. So I ended up playing Reinhardt and then that just kind of stuck because guess what? Nobody likes playing Reinhardt and nobody ever really started to like playing Reinhardt. Um, so yeah, that's how that happened. Sometimes you have to give up your fun if you want to play a game competitively. Who is considered hitscan? As the title says, I'm wondering who is actually... I keep seeing people argue about whether or not McCree is hitscan. I keep seeing discrepancies online. I mean, you've only got two methods of... Eight, like, of two types of characters. You've got hitscan and you've got projectile. Hitscan is just you click it and it's there, right? It just happens. Projectile, it has travel time. Hitscan doesn't. That's the difference. So the hitscan heroes are McCree... Soldier, Widowmaker, uh, Sombra, Reaper, technically. Um, Anna, when scoped, is hitscan. When unscoped, she is projectile. Like, McCree is definitely hitscan. I don't see what... I don't see how there can possibly be arguments about this. Because you're either hitscan or you're projectile. McCree definitely isn't projectile. If he is, his projectile is so fast as to basically be hitscan. So the difference doesn't really matter. Zenyatta's kind of like that. He is projectile, but his projectile is very fast to the point where there's only like a slight delay and except at very long range. So I don't I don't know how there can really be an argument about it. There are quite a few people who are technically hit scan. Like Reaper is technically hit scan, but like, let's be real, he isn't actually. Because <laughs> he's a point blank hero. So I don't see how people can be arguing about this really. It's kind of objective. Am I at a disadvantage if I play a Overwatch my PC can barely run it? I mean, yes. Frame rate is barely 30 FPS. I mean, if it's 30 FPS, that's fine. That's playable. Ideally, it's at 60 FPS, yes. But, like, you can play at 30. 30 is fine. Um, the the issue is, like, if your frame rate, frame rate, frame rate fluctuates then that's kind of an issue, but if it stays consistently at 30 FPS or very close to 30 FPS, that's playable. Like, that's fine. 60's better, but that's good enough, honestly. Effectiveness of Soldier 76. Also, if, like, you're between 30 and 60, um, like, it fluctuates between those two points, it often ends up being better to cap it at 30, because if your frame rate fluctuates, then... That, cre that makes it awkward to play the game. If it's just a consistent frame rate, that makes it easier to play the game. Uh, some people will argue about that, but like, if it's so rapidly going back between like 30 and 45, it's better to just cap it at 30 if you can't maintain a higher frame rate. So I bought the game yesterday and I love playing with 76. I noticed, however, not many people play him and I was curious as to why. He seems like a well-rounded character that can heal, shoot distance, and shoot grenades. They're not grenades. Is there something I'm missing? He's just not as fun as the other heroes. Soldier has always been like a good hero. Um, and currently I think he's like one of the better DPS to pick. Um, especially since Far is pretty common right now, as is... Uh, Reinhardt, Soldier's very good at breaking barriers. The thing is, the other heroes are just more fun than Soldier, right? Like, Soldier's a pretty basic hero. People would rather play heroes like Hanzo, Genji, McCree, blah, 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 blah. Soldier is, like, better than McCree, like, objectively. But you will see more McCree players than you will Soldier players, just because McCree is a more fun hero than Soldier. Soldier is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with Soldier. His, the biggest issue with Soldier right now is just that he's not as good as Hanzo, for example, but there's nothing wrong with Soldier. Anna, please stop boosting Hammond if you're not actually at, 
if you're not actually a uh, the capture point he can control. It seems like boosting Hammond in general is probably not a great idea, but I mean, I guess maybe, I don't know. He's not in the game yet. Position sim teleporter entrance to spawn on top of turrets consistently. I mean, spawns in front of me, other times it spawns right under me. It is meant to always spawn in front of you, so I'm guessing the issue is that you're trying to do it clo too close to a wall. Because if you're too close to a wall, it can't really put it in front of you, so it would have to put it under you. But, like, it's meant to put it in front of you always, I thought, so... I could be wrong, but I thought it was always meant to be in front of you, so it's probably, a, like, a geometry issue that it can't spawn in front of you, so it's just putting it under you. Need help with translating this Korean riding guide. Oof, 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 oof. Off tanks. I'm a relatively new player, and some term that I have read and is off tank. As an off tank, what are you supposed to do? What are the off tanks we have? The off tanks we have are... Diva, Zarya, Roadhog, and I would argue Orisa is also a better off tank than a main tank, but people will fight me on that one, but I will fight you right, you can meet me in the fucking pit if you want to fight about it, Orisa is a better, better off tank than a main tank. The difference with, like, the off tanks are basically just a weaker front line, but they tend to be higher damage heroes, right, like, Reinhardt's a main tank, Winston's a main tank, Hammond will see, um, it's just, Reinhardt's like, they're, they absorb a lot of damage and create a lot of space for their team. Off tanks are not as good at generating space for their team, but they tend to have some other aspect to it. They're still tanky, but that's not like their only feature, right? Like Zarya is tanky. She's got 400 health and the barriers and all that. But that's like the thing with Zarya is that she's tanky and supportive and damaging at the same time. So... The off tanks are just weaker front lines, like they aren't like the big front line that Reinhardt is, but they have a more, uh, they have a nut, they still do generate space, they are still tanky, just not as effectively as a, a main tank, but they tend to be more threatening heroes in and of themselves, right? Like if you've got a uh, Zarya at full charge running after you, that's scarier than a Winston running after you, right? But Winston will typically generate more space than Zarya just because of the amount of, like, space he personally occupies and presence he puts off. He'll generate more space, whereas Zarya is a more threatening presence still. Um, because when she's high charge, she's gonna fucking murder you. Also, Graviton is objectively better than Primal Rage, so there's that. So the off tanks are just weaker front lines, but they weaker tanks, but they are more threatening or have some big supportive element to them. Uh, and the off tanks, basically, like Reinhardt's, like someone like Reinhardt is meant to be like up there holding back the majority of their team, the enemy team, right? And then the off tank is doing the other stuff, like they're helping Reinhardt as much as they can. But if there's like a Genji killing the backline or something like that, the off tank's meant to go help with that because the Reinhardt needs to stay there to keep the enemy team back because as soon as he leaves, the entire team comes in because suddenly the shield isn't there and the threat of Earth Shatter isn't there anymore. So that's when they come in. So he has to stay there. Zarya, however, she can go off and start bullying the, the Genji. She can go do that. Uh, and that's what the off, basically the off tanks deal, help the main tank as much as possible, but if some other issue is happening somewhere else, they're meant to be the ones that go off and deal with that. Um, yeah, or like, you know, like someone like, uh, D.Va's watching for threatening ultimate so that she can eat it with self, with, uh, defense matrix, you know, who she's trying to zone people off when the fight starts with, uh, gra uh self-destruct, things like that. They're the more supportive tanks. Need some help advice. Morsi, Moira, Bridget, and Reinhardt Winston main. That's a lot of mains to have right there. Uh, I've been playing Overwatch. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, before point AKDA on Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, Siege is fucking hard. Okay, so John. <laughs> Siege is hard. That's probably a better KDA than me. Um, 30% ranked win rate in League of Legends. League of Legends is also hard. Um, I played that game for seven years. I got up to plat two, I think. Somewhere like that. Like, League of Legends is just a hard game. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can be bad at League of Legends. And then the team, the, there's the team issue again. 
I find myself, get discouraged, blah, blah, blah. Going well, 6-4, my placement's getting nice. Well, every game after my placement so far has been horrible losses. All of them with pre-made teams. I've run into, I've only run into one toxic team thus far. And I really hate to keep dropping some key things I see wrong with how I'm playing is that I keep getting picked off almost immediately as I rejoin my team on the objective. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Uh, even staying by the tank side or trying to be extra cautious. Oh, Ron, I'm just not sure what I'm doing wrong or how to fix it. Um, so, I mean, that is definitely an issue. And basically the way to deal with that is play more conservatively or like maybe it's a game sense issue. Uh, it's probably just like not noticing something dangerous happening and then getting picked off by it. Um or not playing, like, or trying to be extra cautious. I mean, it sounds like it's either not being cautious enough or a game sense issue, where it's just not, like, not noticing danger. So the thing is, the placement games are not really the greatest indicator of where you, where you end up, because basically they're just regular games that are weighted more heavily. But the thing is, as well, is that the quality of teammates you have in placement games fluctuates far more wildly than, um when uh, you're actually placed because it just kind of pulls from wherever the fuck it seems like so i don't know the intricacies of the system because i don't work at blizzard but it seems to just kind of pick whoever and whatever the fuck and put you together and then it just seems like a more heavily weighted game than normal so you can end up in pl weird places as a result of it um, especially if it's your first time getting placed because it doesn't have a previous sample to go off of because if you played previous season and you were like platinum like mid plat even if you lose all 10 games you'll probably at worst be like high gold right like it tends to be within a degree of where you got placed before but if you got like i like if if you've not been placed before probably just looked at that like slightly above average close to platinum though that might not be where you actually belong at which point it will even out but i mean that's like a vague thing, so it sounds like a game sense issue or not being cautious enough. But I mean, it's hard to say without seeing someone play, isn't it? So, who knows? Any good Genjis here to teach me? Probably not. Uh, it's a video. Disregard. I'm average at Genji at best. I've been getting a lot of comments about my lack of even basic strategy, yet I have no idea what to do about it. A lot of reviews I've gotten on recent VODs have mostly given me similar criticisms that are completely aimless in my direction during matches. Uh, which is completely fair assumption considering my video the videos that were sent in. However, I have no idea what to do about this as any time I try to come up with something, my mind just draws complete blank and won't be able to do so. So I just sort of do whatever, hoping it works. So... First, you gotta, like, it depends on what hero you're playing, because each hero is trying to do something fundamentally different. So... Hold on, I'm gonna move my microphone. There we go. So each hero is trying to do something fundamentally different. So when you pick the hero, that makes it easier for you to decide what you're going to do, because then you can zero in on something, right? Because just saying, like, how do you win on Volskaya Industries is a very vague statement. But if you say, how do you win on Volskaya Industries as Farah, at that point it gets a lot more narrow, because at that point it's like poke over the uh, archway at the start, or try flanking left side if you flank left. Um, try and sneak up on a squishy target and kill them. If you're not going around left or they're keeping you from going that way, go and poke and prod around the archway and try to make big plays with barrage and pick people off where appropriate. So you kind of got to zero in on what you're trying to do. So if you like think about what, like think about the hero you've picked, right? Um, and like, yeah, there's a whole thing with like picking heroes and all that, but let's disregarding that, right? Think about the hero you've picked, and then think about what that hero is trying to achieve. And then, think to yourself, alright, so if I'm trying to do X, how do I get to X, right? If I'm playing Genji, I'm trying to make big plays with Dragonblade, how do I get to that point? Well, I'm gonna go over to a relative- I'm gonna go over here because I have great mobility, so I'm gonna get into this kind of out-of-the-way location and harass people, and if I see an opportunity to pick somebody off, I'll go for it, but really I'm just trying to farm ultimate off the enemy team as much as possible while pressuring them, and then as soon as I have my ultimate, I'm gonna jump on the mercy over there because obviously I want to kill the squish- the high priority supports first, so I'll jump on the mercy, pull out the blade, kill her, blah blah blah. And then go from there. Like, think about what your hero's trying to do. And then think about how you're going to get there. Um, 
And then, you know, if you're playing like a flanker or a DPS hero, you have uh, targets to keep in mind because each DPS hero is good at killing certain things or trying to kill certain people. So try and look at their team and decide who you're trying to kill first and what you're going to do to fill time if you can't get to that person, blah, 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 blah. Just like think what your hero is trying to do and then figure out how you're going to get to that location. And this is also how you figure out like what your play style is, right? Because you just kind of troubleshoot what goes wrong, right? Because especially if you're not used to coming up with this kind of thing, you're going to get it wrong. So like, go like, so you just figure out what you're going to try and do. Even if it's bad, like, don't worry about it. Even if it goes badly, right? Then just afterwards go, why didn't it work, right? And um, that's how you develop your style is you try something and you go, well, that didn't work. So I'm going to try this instead. And then that's how it goes out from there. Because, um, yeah, it's just about thinking about, like, what happened and what you could have done to avoid it. Because if you're playing, like, Reinhardt, for example, and you end up getting wiped in a team fight, you just go back and you think, well, what was the thing that lost this the team fight? And then you go, well, it was when we got, when they five-man earth shouted us, right? Well, why did that happen? Well, my shield was low at the time, and then they started pushing in while my shield was low, and their Reinhardt shield was high. So what could I have done previously to maintain a higher shield? Well, and then you go back and you go through the entire fight and you figure out what guy what went wrong, so, and what you could have done instead to change that. And then you, through this process of like analyzing and troubleshooting what happened, you eventually figure out what strategies are best and what strategies work well for you because not all like heroes aren't exactly binary. There isn't like specifically one way to play them, right? Key example is Genji. There are two, like, massively divergent ways to play Genji. Um, one being basically all entirely with your team, and then the other one being basically entirely behind their team by yourself. Both play completely differently, but they are both completely valid ways of playing Genji. So that's sort of how you figure out, like, what strategies work and what strategies work well for you in particular. So just, like, think about the hero you've picked. Try to think about what you're trying to do. And then figure out what, how you're going to get to that point. And yeah, you're going to fuck it up. You're going to get it wrong. Such as life, such as being human. You know, you're going to fuck up. Just figure out why it was fucked up. What you could have done instead. What you think might work. And then try that next time. And then as long as you're thinking about it. You know, as long as you're, cogn you're, you're, you're cognitive of what's happening. Then you'll figure it out. And you'll improve. And you'll figure out what strategies are best. Career, career SR with a stable frame rate versus current SR at unstable, low frame rate. Wow. Math. Incredible. And placed current... Yeah. Mm-hmm. What did I just get away? Like, look, I'm not going to go... Like, yeah, having an unstable frame rate's bad is the gist of it, especially if it's very low. Five requests. I began writing a blog today to keep myself and other like-minded people away of st aware of staying tilt-free. Join me if you like. I mean, so it's, uh, what's it called? What's a payload.com? Um, you know, if you're interested, go check it out. Uh, let's see. Just got back to the game. Couple questions. First, what's considered meta right now? How many tank supports and DPS hero should one team have? 2-2-2 two, two, two is still basically the thing. Um, triple support and triple tank are occasionally picked. Um, but basically 2-2-2 two, two, two is what you'll see the majority of the games. Uh, what's considered meta right now is Reinhardt, Zarya, um, Hanzo, Farah, Mercy, Zenyatta. And quite a lot of games are just mirror matches of those. One team maybe changes to have a counter to Farah. Um, that's like the most commonly seen. Like, Reinhardt, Zarya, Mercy, Zenyatta are basically like completely statically like these are the best things you can pick right now. Um, and then Hanzo is the DPS, and then the other one kind of changed. Like, that's basically what the meta is right now. Like, that's, like, the best team composition, basically. Um, Mercy's just really strong right now. She's better than the other two main healers. Especially since Hanzo and Farah are so popular right now. She synergizes well with both of those heroes. And they're both really good to damage boost. Zarya and Hanzo in a lot of games, that makes Zenyatta better because Transcendence is great for stopping that ultimate from happening, as well as other threatening ultimates from happening in general. So Zenyatta's really good. Um, and the, like, 
the, there's just certain games that, like, if you don't have a Zenyatta, you lose because certain alts coming at you, you're meant to lose. So Zenyatta, like, Zenyatta stops that from happening. So Zenyatta ends up being, like, close to mandatory for a lot of games these days. Um... Reinhardt's really good because the team comps at this point like is rel they're relatively death ball esque with like a Hanzo and a Farah. Farah is going to be off doing her own thing. But besides that, the team composition is pretty like static. So having Reinhardt is helpful for that. Um, and then by having one team having a Reinhardt kind of makes the other team want to have a Reinhardt as well. So that just kind of goes like that. But that's basically the meta right now. Um, two two two, Reinhardt Zarya. Farah, Hanzo, Zenyatta, Mercy. The DPS, there's some fluctuation, but the tanks and supports, it's basically like, these are the best ones. Uh, what heroes are better than others right now? What's S tier, A tier, etc.? S tier is Hanzo, Zenyatta. Um, no, Hanzo's probably S tier, Zenyatta's A tier, probably. Um, it's like, Zen Hanzo's definitely S tier, and then A is like, um, Zenyatta... Mercy. Mercy might be S tier. Mercy is definitely A tier though. And then Zari is A. And then I, I I'd have to kinda like chart it out beyond that point, but like that's basically like the top two tiers right now. Uh recommend beginner guides and YouTubers. <laughs> um I can't imagine any such individuals. Sensitivity guide. If it feels good, it's good. If it don't feel good, change it. Sensitivity every single time. Uh, had an Anna buff ability limited lock on for allies by holding right click with scope button and uh, keeping uh, 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 Anna will mark as a preferred target the mark ability would have and from then on as long as Anna passes a line of sight check with that target she can hold down the primary fire to shoot that target with a rifle the shot will have slight travel time but, I mean, I like I guess, but I feel like that's removing some of the skill from Anna at the same time. Like and can potentially be limiting in some situations. I don't really think. Like we'll see what the ultimate does to Anna. Um the ultimate buff that they're putting in. I don't think it's gonna be of a massive make a massive difference to Anna, but we'll see what that one does. Um I'm still of the opinion that, like, we should just give her all the move speed buff back at this point. The game's completely different by this point. I don't think the move speed buff would be tr tragically overpowered or anything like that. And it would give her ultimate a degree of consistency that it currently lacks. Because to my mind, that's, like, the big issue with Anna, is that just, that like, her ultimate is so, ra like, drastically inconsistent in how good it is. And Overwatch as a game is, uh... uh oh, yeah, Widow's really meta right now as well. Widow's, like, A tier as well. Uh, go back and adjust that widow's like a tier but the caveat there is that widow is a very high skill character so you know um like i think anna's fine it's just that her ultimate is the issue so i just think that we should give her that back at this point the move speed buff uh try of widow and hanzo those are too long didn't read no may is not the strongest dps in the game at the moment but if you're not in the mood for Widowmaker or hanzo may is a good option with the same average impact of heroes like mccree gaining tons of extra impact on some maps yeah i think may is actually pretty good right now um, she's definitely not like, she'd be like mid-tier if we were to put her on a list, but like, she's pretty good right now. Like, especially given that most team comps, like again, a lot of team comps are relatively sedentary right now. So if you just like throw Blizzard in the middle of them, like it's probably going to hit quite a few people. And on some maps, Blizzard is horrifically overpowered. Um, like, uh... A lot of the King of the Hill maps, it's pretty overpowered on. Like, uh, what's a really good map for this? Um, I'm trying to think of, like, the May map right now, where I'm like, oh, God, that would be terrible. Uh, King's Row is pretty good. Um, a Dorado's third checkpoint is really bad to get uh, Blizzard chucked at you on there. Um most two cp maps uh oh it's, it's gotta be like hanamura it's gotta be hanamura that's gotta be the map where it's the strongest like there are some maps where blizzard is just like horrifically overpowered basically confined locations um or points that are, are big and open with no cover on them like hanamura <laughs> yeah definitely and you can wall people off because there's like hard choke points on those maps like may may is really good on some maps 
As counterintuitive as it sounds, the more you need healing, the more you should stand in front of your healer. This is sometimes terrible advice. Uh, I'm a, like, not all advice, not, no advice is correct 100% of the time. This advice is wrong probably like 30% of the time. Um, like, you do want to make yourself as healable as possible. But sometimes going out to stand in front of your healer is going to get you killed because you're moving into a more exposed location. So, like, that advice is not always good. But you need to keep your heal trust your healers to keep up. Like, you can trust them, but, like, sometimes that's still not always going to be okay. Like, I don't, I don't like this because I feel like that's wrong. A significant enough portion of the time to not just make that sweeping advice. Uh, how can I maximize damage during a Winston ult? Alright, so we pick the target we want to kill, right? Here's what you do, right? You pick the target you want to kill. You jump on that target, you ult, and then you punch them, your jump reset off of you pushing your ult. So you follow them. Oh god, don't do that. You follow them. You land in front of them. Maybe you punched them in the air as you were jumping. All right, but like you follow them. You land in front of them. You wait just like a second for your jump cooldown again. Then you punch them. You follow them again. And you keep clapping them. And at that point, they're basically dead. Because you jumped on them initially, so that did damage. You know, tased them, punched them as you came in, all that. Then you all punch, jump, land again, does damage again. Maybe you punched them in the air again. Punch, follow, punch, 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 dead. Land on him again. Uh, it's basically having like a degree of patience, because the thing is when you start ulting as Winston, your initial re reaction is just like, I'm going to go and hit as many people as possible. But really just like pick a dude and start bullying that dude. And like just have some patience after the first punch. Land, wait for the cooldown. Punch so you can follow him after that and keep just like stick to that motherfucker as he flies through the air. Um, and then, you know, if you're in a confined location, you can just pin him against the wall and speedball him. You know, fun times like that. But, like, if you're in a relatively open space, the best thing to do is just, like, have a bit of patience. Also, um, where you can move your mouse to the left and right, and more people. Is, is there something similar to that for Winston? I'll, no, that's bad for Winston. Because the thing with Winston as well is he, because of the way he swings his arm... The way he punch, the way he pushes them is kind of weird because like if they're directly in front of you, you just kind of punch them away. But if they're like off to the side of your cursor, because he kind of bats them, like he doesn't just like punch you, he sweeps his arm. So if they're off to the side, they go off to the sides. So if you just start spinning around, like if you try to do Reinhardt strats where you swing around, swing around to hit more people, you end up pushing them in God knows what directions, and it makes it harder to keep track of where everybody is. There are sometimes you want to do that just to like scatter the enemy team as much as possible, but if you're specifically trying to damage people with the ultimate, you actually want to be somewhat conservative and just like, it's like a, a long duration, right? Like you've got time to like, kind of line up the punch so you know where they're gonna go and you can stick to them and wait for your cooldowns and stuff like that. So if you try to Reinhardt people with it, you'll push them God knows where, which makes it harder to keep up with. So that's like the best thing to do if you're just trying to like murder one motherfucker. Um, basically have like slightly more patience than the ultimate makes you want to have. Because I, yeah, big angry monkey. You want to just go punch people. I know how it is. I understand. But sometimes being patient is the way to way to go. Uh, let's see, we got anything else? Widowmaker and her haters. I don't get it. No, no, it's just because like it's just such an easy target of blame. Basically, is the issue. And then we got no more questions. Hooray! So that's been two pages, and we're at fifty minutes, just under. So hooray! Good job, team. Sounds good to me. So thank you very much for watching. If you did, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer. If you haven't already, you can join our Discord and ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them or just shitpost with us. And I hope you found the video helpful.